So here's an example of a, a scheduled item or a delicate item. So this piece was, had a fairly high value. It's a hand-painted piece, not glazed. So very, very important when we have a piece like that, that we take and we test a section of the paint, maybe an inconspicuous part of the, of the, of the item, just to make sure with a Q-tip, just to make sure that the, the soap and water alone don't start to remove paint. Because you could have this item, could have been in the fire, or was in the fire, but it was so close to the heat source that its paint was altered. And so that paint doesn't adhere, it doesn't adhere as well. So we want to make sure that we test it to make sure, hey, am I losing paint or not? If I'm losing paint, then I'm going to have to just chem, use a chem sponge and a, and a damp cloth and, and try to clean it and wipe it down as best we can. If we, if we test and, and the fire has not altered the paint, then we're safe to drop the part in. But again, with a delicate item, excess heat's a no-no. Uh, too much power in the tank's not going to be good, and leaving it in too long will remove paint. So we walk you through a process sheet, which I call like a Betty Crocker cake recipe. This tells you step by step how to clean a delicate item. And so we're going to use the Omega Smoke, again, that 1 to 64 ratio, which is if you just follow the the, the gallons, depending on the tank you have, that will, you don't even have to do any of this math. Uh, 110 degree water. Now in this example, that particular pH meter read, read 11.2. I want to repeat, do not get hung up on the pH of your unit. pH meters are not 100% accurate. And pH meters go out of calibration. So what I care about is, mechanically, do I have enough soap in the tank to clean your particular job today. And at that point, we take a reading. And whatever that reading is, whether it's 11.2 or 11.0 or 10.8, whatever it is, that's the number for this particular job. And what I care about is a drop of a half a point. OK? That's the key. So that mechanical testing that we did before we started cleaning is the key to this whole thing. If you skip that step, and you try to get to some arbitrary pH number. You could be too high with too much soap or too low with not enough if your pH meter is out of calibration. If I have too much soap, the, the potential problem is on delicate items, I might damage the paint. Uh, certainly, I'm going to be using a lot more chemistry, which is costly, and it's harder to rinse off. So the more chemistry I have, it's slippery. It's more slippery to work with, and it's harder to rinse off. So we want to use the right amount of chemistry for this particular job. And when we're cleaning, we want to clean to the point of pre-loss. So that's a really important distinction. We are not trying to take something that is not brand new and make it brand new again, because it's not brand new. Our job as, as a content specialist is to return the item to a pre-loss condition. So we want to stop cleaning at the level that we're clean. So once we've hit the point where the part is clean, we stop the ultrasonic process. There's no reason to continue on. One, you might potentially damage the part. So that's a very important distinction. We're going to run 50% power, so we'll, we'll, we'll demonstrate that later in terms of the amplitude, how loud that machine or strong the machine is. And we're going to run a 15-second cycle. So again, to go through the steps on a delicate item, we're going to pre-test the surface of the item with a Q-tip in an inconspicuous area. We're going to put the figurine into the basket. And then we're going to put the heaviest residue. If there's a section that has heavy residue, that would be facing down because our, our speakers or our transducers are on the bottom of the tank. So that's where it's going to get most of the cleaning power. And we're going to place that basket of figurines into a pre-wash tank for you know, three to five minutes. And at that point, we'll move the baskets to the ultrasonic tank, and we will run that process for 15 seconds. We're going to remove the basket. We're going to inspect to make sure that everything is clean. If we think we need to run another cycle, we will, only if the item can take it. We're not going to damage it. And then from that point, the basket now moves to the rinse tank. We rinse it. We air dry it, run through the tunnel dryer, and we repack it. And we will demonstrate this mechanically later. But I want you to all get a good feel for the, the theory behind it. The mechanical steps that I just described 
are not going to change whether it's delicate, electrical, uh, general, or tooling for the most part. It's the same set of steps. We're always opening the box. We're always going to tag the box in the baskets. We're going to pre-wash it. We're going to ultrasonically wash it. We're going to rinse it. We're going to air wash it with compressed air. We're going to tunnel dry it, and then we're going to rewrap it in a new box. Those mechanical steps are the same throughout on every, every type item we clean. The only things that are going to change item to item will be things like temperature, the power levels, the amount of time it's in. And you'll see that in the subsequent recipes.